The missing information on the drawing are as follows. The flow of each branch, the length of vertical conduits, the direction of flows in rectangular and circular reductions, the manufacturer data, and the specifications of the fittings. Flow rate of each branch. Use this command to annotate one element. You don't need to annotate each element, as when you select one element of a branch, all the other elements of the same branch are selected at the same time. Insert the flow rate and then confirm. The same flow rate will be assigned to the whole branch. Repeat the same step for the other branches with the help of the yellow square. This is a dialog box containing a range of possible flow rates that you can select from. It includes adding or subtracting the last two flow rates used. The length of vertical objects. There are two elements in this graphic object looking from top to bottom. It is made of a conduit and then an elbow. When clicking on the conduit, we can quickly see that the pressure drops weren't calculated. This is normal, as the length is not indicated. Enter the length value and then confirm. The pressure drop is then displayed. The green square confirms this. When clicking on the elbow, the pressure drop is displayed. The green square confirms it was calculated. This graphic object is now completely annotated. About the direction of flow in the reductions and transformations in general. You only have to click on the image of the object and indicate the direction of the flow, air supply or extraction. The manufacturer data. Insert the value and then press confirm. This lets you compute a theoretical zeta coefficient. It displays together with the letter F, which indicates that the value was forced. In other words, that the value was inserted by the user and not computed by Zetacad. Fittings. Four examples of diverging parts. Let's start with the grid. The elements of this graphic object are the T and the grid. The position of this object is unusual as it is at the end of the network. On the right of the grid, the flow equals zero. In this case, the object is called a T with a cap. The red square allow us to specify the pressure drop value to use in the calculation. Since we've already started to annotate the flow rate for each branch when clicking on this fitting, only the direction of the flow has to be specified. The flow rate for each entry or exit of the T are automatically worked out. This graphic object contains several elements. Only the elements for which a pressure drop value is given will be taken into account for the computation. To display or hide the pressure drop, click on it. The principle is the same for this fitting. However, it can be annotated directly by clicking on this elbow object. Let's focus on the use of the red square in two different cases. First case. In this T, we must indicate the pressure drop from 2 to 1. In the other T, we must indicate the pressure drop from 2 to 3. Note that we don't need the elbow or the conduit. And here we need all the elements. For this T, we'll indicate it from 2 to 3. Second case. Here we need all the elements. And also the pressure drop of the T from 2 to 1. ZetaCAD is a pressure drop computation software that uses a 2D graphical mode of representation rather than 3D modeled networks. For this reason, some situations require that you modify your graphic to perform computations. 
For example, conduits that must be rebuilt, networks that must be moved, because Zetacad does not manage superimposed conduits. In this case, the solution is to turn the branch by 90 degrees. The length and the number of elements in the network remain the same. In this case, a virtual reflection of the AHU air handling unit in relation to the vertical duct allows to modify the network without changing its characteristics. The number of elbows and the length remain the same.